let you all know. Let's jump in it. This is a best of five between two of the best teams in the world. Onyx Esports versus Echo. Let's jump right into the draft. Ooh, right off the bat from Echo side, we have the Kadida and the Glue Monster band. On the other side, we have none other than the two most meta marksmen in the game, Carry and One One. Uh, nothing so special so far, but from Echo side, we see more target band with the Kadida. This is what I'm wondering, right? If we don't see Fanny come out in these last two bands, okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> never mind. Don't, just scrap it, right? Okay, Fanny's not going to slip through here. So still, now that the Eve is banned out, what is the priority here? I mean, they could just. I mean, Carrie's gone, Eve is gone. I would say that it would go into the support uh, into the support role between both of these sides. For all we know, Kaja has come up a couple of times as a first pick. I'm not 100% sure whether it's actually going to pull through this time round, especially since there are ways to actually flex some of those picks. Maybe even Frederick? Yeah, and also there is Joy available on the map, and there's Grok, one of the most viable flex picks in the entire meta. We know how damaging how scary the Grok can be on both the XP lanner between the two teams. But here we go, speaking of Kaja, will be the first pick, and Grok! Every single mentioned Valentina. Oh my god, they're picking everything cryo so far in the first round of draft. I love it. I love the Valentina so much here. The question is whether or not there's going to be... I don't know, there, there's a big correlation between EXP and mid lane, right? When you get an artillery mage, you see Lapu Lapu immediately utes off as well. We see Farsa, same exact situation. However, Joy, now at the highest level of gameplay in the upper brackets, has really seen a big resurgence. I love it, right? I mean... For a while, I, I feel like there was a debate, where does Joy fit? And now I feel like we have our answer, right? We would say XP lane, you run the Vengeance, you kind of play around that. And again, Fredrin, man, did we see some pristine Fredrin gameplay yesterday in the hands of Wise, right? So now, if this is most likely going in the jungle, that's going to be that objective base. So you're going to see this, right? Does Kyrie want to focus on that too? Go towards that utility focus objective playstyle, Or does he just lock in that assassin playstyle and set the tempo? Honestly, it's it's a little tough to say. I mean, the Lunox gets locked in here. You were saying, Dave? Yeah, what I was trying to say is, even though we want to see the Assassin matchup, but it seemed like Echo, they're locking Joy, they're locking the Fredrin. That means like one of those two might go jungle here like with a really high possibility. I mean, it's it's likely that you can even go with Fredrin Silent and Joy mid sometimes, right? But the chance of that happening in time in 4, I think so far we have not yet to see a Joy mid, right? It's Joy jungle. Yeah. But not melee. Well, here's the thing. You brought up a really interesting point about like switching it over into the EXP lane. I just have the sneaking suspicion that we might actually see, you know, Fredrin go into the EXP lane, and then after that, Joy gets thrown over into the jungle as a way to kind of, you know, deter Cartesi from playing an assassin. Play something tanky, and I quote unquote might still get my assassin oh. later on if I am Kyrie. Oh man! So with that Hayabusa man, that's taking out the Fanny too. Yeah. They might even use that last band towards another assassin if they really want to. But I mean, still, the Ling, right? Unless they really want to go against the Ling here. That's a possibility. But just the fact as well that a Valentina is across from you for Onik Esports, Echo's got to be really careful how they approach that. Because, I mean, even right now, if a Valentina just goes and takes that Kaja, the Divine Judgment available to them, then that pickoff potential is there, especially paired up with this Lunox, and we saw that combination, that relationship between those two heroes alone. And there it is, the Ling is banned out. Oh, this is, I don't know, I'm, I'm already sweating. The Ling's already banned out, people are focusing on those assassins, but Yaoi specifically quotes that he really wants to fight with Keyboy on the M4 stage. I don't know why, <laughs> it seems that his heroes are the same as, as mains. He's also very good at positioning and getting pickoffs. I'm guessing that Yaoi is seeing a lot of himself in Keyboy, strangely enough. Yeah, I'm really excited because I'm big, biggest fan of all the support roam players, right? Usually we've seen them getting the least highlights, but we all know here on the casters that those, the difference in the support, the difference in initiations are the difference in the game. You know, who can play more aggressive? We talked about in the early, in the early series that we had today, which is the person who, the team who engaged first usually wins the game. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. And Yaoi said it very humbly, right? I want to play against my opposition here because it depends. It's going to see, like, you know, who is going to be the better tank here. And let's see the draft. The oh. Kufra are taking out. And we have Melissa making the first debut in M4 as well as Xavier. All right. Now, Melissa used to be used as a way to kind of defeat Wan Wan in lane, try to get a little bit of that push, that little bit of harass. There was a lot of ways to deal with it. Number one being Grok. 
Secondly, the fact that Kufa is here, I don't know about you, but uh, it feels like this is starting to have some layers to the cake. Layers to the cake for Onik Esports. There's a lot here, right? I mean, you've got multiple ultimates that you can layer on very well. But still, even if you're going with the, let's say it's the Kufra, let's say it's the Gronk initiating things, do you have enough to peel for Echo here? I mean, you've got the Kaja there. We've seen how clutch Mystic Field right placement can be. And again, late game, the no. scaling potential is there, oh. though. Okay. And oh, this boy. is another layer to that cake. Love exactly. To see it. It's yeah. so good. I mean, now that you have Death Sonata, the get away from me. Yeah, sit in your little space. I'm going to blast you out of the game. Oh, my God. The combo coming out from Team Onik. They're looking to Wombo combo, right? With the Kufra engage, with the Grandadero, the Death Sonata, and you have the Valentina dive as well. This is the combo versus the peel, right? Echo is more peeling in this game. It's very uncharacteristic, almost the opposite from what we've seen off Echo in the previous stages. So this is a completely different playstyle coming out from Echo. I'm excited to see how they pull off this Melissa play. You really have to protect, protect the Melissa, but can you do it in front of all this dive? It's tough. It's really tough one here. The only way to decide it is when we jump into the land of dawn. Have a look at the audience here right Ooh. now. Whether you're from the Philippines or whether you're from Indonesia, the watch party outside as well. Good luck to everyone because this battle is going to be bloody. Welcome to game number one in this best of five between Anik Esports up against Echo. Man, just like that, jumping into this one, and I gotta say, the crowd here feels in a way different because I feel like there's actually some people on the Philippine side that love Kyrie too, and of course Coach Yeb. So you have these different chants going on here. But again, the team that strikes first blood in the series is gonna be massive for them. For sure, and honestly, I feel like no matter what, the Philippines is winning at the end of the day, <laughs> whether you like it or not. There's a player and a coach from the side of Onyx, but this is Melissa's debut. Assassin Dave, walk me through these lanes. What should we expect in these early laning phases and where their resources should be invested in? I mean, it seems like so far, early game, it's been pretty peaceful on both sides. In bottom lane, it's a Joy versus a Grok. If you build a little bit of tanky on Grok, Joy's not going to do anything. The same thing, vice versa, the other side. But speaking of that, in the mid lane, though, yep, key boy, is, just key boy just find a little bit of poke, but not going to be too much. On the top side, Lunox versus Melissa, it's going to be like similar stuff. Like, right? you know, to even trade off, but you're not going to see too much. It's going to be pretty peaceful laning phase. Again, it comes down to Keyboy versus Yaoi. Who is going to engage first? Keyboy does have the early game advantage because he is oh. Kufra. Speaking of that, here we go. Not looking good here. Onik Esports wants the first blood. Kairi on the mark. Able to take down Yaoi with that Death Sonata, and it just played out so perfectly. I don't know about you, but it does kind of feel that Onik needs to make that first move all the time. They can't. It, they cannot play defensively against Echo, and, and Echo generally is going to be much better at the counter engaging, stopping this aggression. So now they have to take full advantage of the early game to start their lead. Man, oh. and right now with his first turtle oh. being up here, already having that advantage, but it's going to be Carl Tz that started up. Notice too, Sans has that divine judgment available to them. They've got the numbers advantage. They've got the space here. They're going to go in. The flicker comes in. Turtle Steel looking to be up here. Donnie oh. comes out. Kyrie able to secure it, though. They're still going to continue. Sanford going in. Boots trying to get away here. Carl Tz, oh. a Bracer Trap. Can't get a kill, though. Oh. Onik Esports taking the turtle. Wow, that was disgustingly close to a steal there coming in from the Xavier overall. Didn't have the enlightened form just yet, but if he did, I think that might have been the difference maker. But so far, Echo played it well. The only man, they only got caught up once way before the turtle. But in that situation, you would expect more from Onik. They're playing more disciplined this time and showing a lot of respect to Echo. And this is why this is a grand final worthy type of level gameplay, right? You saw the turtle gameplay. It's uh, uh, Sanford on the Joy going to the back line, but Kufa, keep away with a beautiful skill too, canceling the skill too, canceling the skill too of Joy, so Joy cannot dash, which allowed Kairi to have the room to dish out the damage. Same with the Grok, same with Boots, right? Beautiful zonage to the entire side of Echo, which allowed the Granger to secure the turtle and actually walk away safely. You know, I actually thought Echo was gonna find like a retaliation, a kill or two, especially on Boots, who was so deep, but their objective was really clear and execution was crystal.
Yeah, I think they also understand that right now isn't the time to fight. They do have their ultimates. Yes, they're a little bit more ultimate reliant, but at the end of the day, it's still the items, the numbers here. Oh, oh. might be in some trouble. Okay, they jump in for Carl TZ. Should be fine, though, but it's four members here for Anaki Esports. They're gonna back off for now, and, you know, like you guys were saying, it's really... Echo Philippines does not have the firepower yet, especially we don't actually know how this Melissa is going to work out so far because it's the first time it's come out in the tournament. And you do know that Melissa needs some time to build up here. Comparison, especially when Kyrie is running the Granger, a lot of that damage, a lot of that burst is already coming out through those skills of the Granger. So looks like oh. they're going to put some focus here now. Yawi going to back off for now. Keyboy there to help as well. So. Nothing for now. Well, I think if we're talking about Melissa, we need to categorize her, right? Anybody who uses the Golden Snap are two item marksmen, or so what I like to categorize as two item marksmen. <laughs> Melissa kind of falls into the category of Irithel, where you kind of need four items before you feel almost four. unstoppable. Oh. Well, there we go. Yeah, we're going to flick her in. Divine Judgment, they're going to find Booty. Wild charges out, though. Carl Teezy securing the turtle for now. They might still press the situation here. Keyboy going to take a couple of hits. Should be able to disengage just fine. And now it's going to be a fight here for this purple oh. buff. Combined judgment on Carl Teasy. The Terra fight's there. Can they grab the kill? Oh. Keyboy with a revenge. And it's Kyrie that takes down Carl Teasy. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a beautiful play there coming out from Sans, copying the Divine Judgment. And actually, Wombo comboed along with Keyboy, right? He, with the pull and with the ball, with the ultimate from Kufa, it's absolutely beautiful to watch. At the same time, I gotta say, this is the some, like, downside of Granger when you pick this character. You can't really get territorial control because this character is so easy to dive onto. And you need a lot of protection just now. That's a very, very nicely done from Aqua to zone Granger away. But they're a little bit too aggressive there. Just bit a little bit too much <laughs> more than they can chew. But speaking of that, Onik decided to back away and play a little bit more safe. I do that too on my when I play Kufra. <laughs> you know, where am I going? Where am I going? Where am yeah. I going? Which way is it going to go? It feels like they're really dedicated to this top side, though. Well, oh, no. he's going to charge up. Onik Esports taking the dis disciplined route. They grab that tier one turret, disengaging for now. I think overall, on again, very nice aggression that we're seeing from them. But also, the fact is that Sans Ooh. has that flexibility. They don't necessarily have to take the Divine Judgment. It's just a really powerful ability overall. And it feels like a waste to not take it, especially when Call TZ wants to peel for the rest of the team. So the easiest answer, just pull that front line away and jump right in to open with the Death Sonata. And also, I gotta say, Echo, despite the little bit defeat in the early game, just now when they have two dash, but think about going to the long term, going to the late game, right? The mm. skill in game is definitely leaning towards Echo's favor. They have the Melissa late game. It's a mark, attack speed marksman going to late game. He's going to shred every single frontline tank. Right? I'm talking about Boots is not even a tank. He's going to build damage, a little bit of hybrid. Keyboard is going to disappear if he goes in and misses the skills. Now, the thing here is the playmaker is the Wombo combo. Is Kyrie going to sync with Boots and Keyboy to jump in together? Which I'll find out. Here we go. The third turtle, third and last turtle of this game. Oh, Kyrie going to commit the ultimate here. Oh, Go, goes in with a wild charge. Carl Teasy able to secure it. Yeah, he's going to be in trouble here. They're trying to follow up. Ooh. Sans can't get the pull he wants. Sanji taking the Sans down. And now it's EW on the run. Dawning Ooh. Light comes out. What a brilliance to dodge the Dawning Light. It's only going to be one down for now. Onik Esports giving the call back, but they lose the oh. turtle. And Seal Play going to come out. Nothing committing just yet. Keyboy spinning around again. <laughs> but all they can do is defend for now. Oh, they finally... Okay, so now they back off. They're looking for the reset. There is a good push on that top side. That tier one technically should fall. But wow, Yaoi, that reaction time to the instant flicker coming in from Boots and locking him down with the Divine Judgment. And it, who else can produce that? Who can produce that move? Yeah, but going to the late game, you know, I also want to go back to the point that Akko is playing the scaling game, right? Now, scaling me, and, and they're winning. You know, you have Senji under the Xav this Xavier. If it gets to late game, once Xavier finished three core items, especially the Clock of Destiny, Lightning Truncheon, it's going to be absolutely insane. Oh, speaking of that, here we go. Echo playing a little bit more aggressive. Oh, yeah, he doesn't have the flicker available, so he couldn't commit exactly the way he wanted to, but it just backs off for now. Again, they got to respect this damage also coming out from Kyrie. You saw he just picked up that Malefic Roar. Go. He's going to hurt much more. Keyboy going to charge up Ooh. under the turret. He goes, he's got the flicker. He's going to get to buy judgment himself. Dawning Light comes out. It's Benny Cutie with a kill here. They're going to back off, still taking their time. They're happy to one kill. 
And Onik Esports gonna back off. That was so nice. Now we have a very clear idea of how Echo wants to play, right? It's a hook, spear, and shield strategy. Very similar to Mincitar. You look to hook that one person in, the call TZ comes and blocks as much damage as he can so that Onik cannot follow up with the Death Sonata. He just needs to be in the right place at the right time. At the same time, that does mean the bottom tier one tower is in trouble for the side of Onik. But Echo now, with the pressure they gain, they able to easily push a lot of pressure on the bottom side. Speaking of that, here we come. Okay, Carl Teasy was there. He had the vision. Lord's gonna be up now. Both teams, you're gonna see them just kind of ensue this Lord dance. And you gotta also keep an eye, right? Sans does have the divine judgment. So right now, Ooh. Echo knows this. They're not gonna commit. I mean, topside, Joy has to actually maintain that wave. And Onik, even though they could want to bait out a fight here, I don't think they want to start it too soon unless they know the positions of the Echo members. And now they're walking up. Like, you can see that Yaoi is oh, very clear where he's going to be. Keyboy looks for engage. Yaoi knows Sanford's going to go oh. in. It's Kyrie that secures the Lord. Sans going to be trouble. He's going to flick around. Sanford grabbing the kill. Echo looking for a collapse here. The Dawning Light's going to come out. It misses its mark. Oh. Kyrie going to be in a bad position. Has to go out. Keyboy, though. Sanji unleashing. Appraiser's Wrath will miss. Not finding the mark, but CW falls as well. And Echo is punishing Onik Esports. Huge mistake there coming in from Onik. That Mystic Field into the tri buff, cutting off an extremely crucial funnel point. And just Onik members walking into it and getting caught up, even though it was clear the Mystic Field was active. Oh my god, and that's just showing you how deadly Joy can be on the EXP laner. He literally won we 5 right? He walked in, popped the Vengeance, and what are you gonna do? Sens just died, and Kyrie was trying to help. Nobody can help. You know, because he's so tanky, he has immunity to claw control. At the same time, if you hit him, you're, it's like hitting yourself. But worse, he doesn't have a shield, has an ultimate, just to take all the damage that reflects onto you. So, what a beautiful, beautiful character. Beautiful pick here, in this case, to dive onto Kyrie and dive onto Sans. Here we go. Play. Gonna come Let's out go. here. They get the oh. wild charge. But the getaway comes out from Benny Cutie disengaging the fight. Great reaction time coming out from Echo. Boots needs to realize no, that he's yeah. becoming a little bit more predictable and he needs to make sure that his passive is on a line when he does it. Even the smallest 0.5 cap in his passive <laughs> can get countered. This is nuts. This is absolutely nuts. Let's take a look at the items of the power spike. Melissa already finished three core items. His damage online is not going to be really good against tanks because he doesn't have any penetrations, melee damage, and critical damage. Look at Granger, though. It's Honda Strike, Malefic Roar. This guy is being pure penetration. It's just going to be that burst of skill damage. Here we go. Oh, no. Are we going to find his target here? Keyboy's going to be in trouble. Oh! Razor Brown oh! comes down, but the stun comes out. A massive revenge. Yaoi's in trouble, Carl DZ falls! It's all the Esports trying to turn the tide! Oh. But look at Sanford! Double kill for Benny Cutie as well! It looks so good! But it turned out bad for Onik Esports. What a counter engage here. You think you're gonna take out your boy Keyboy? <laughs> he makes the play after absorbing and soaking so much. But Benny QT, Inspire, and a quick puppet chunking out four people at once. I have to see his items. I need to know, how did he do this? He is building pure burst, right? Now, speaking of that, it also is a tough task for CW. He has to find the flanks, he has to find the Ruby DD combo onto the backline, because if he doesn't, this is going to spell trouble or doom for Onyx Esports. I mean, again, this is a skilling game. The later it gets, the worst it gets. And there are two hyper carries for Echo Sider, right? You have to worry about the Xavier, you have to worry about the Joy. Uh, sorry, you have to worry about the Melissa. I mean, which one do you go to? As long as they don't overlap the position, you have to find the most important one. I think at this point right now, it is going to be Benny QT. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you have a really big decision here, here to go. make on who you're going to focus if you're on a key sports here. And especially if Sans can get that divine judgment, they're going to force Echo back off this Lord the best they can. But Carl TZ, they're going to continue it. They're gonna look for the advantage the way they can. Also, Sanford, keep an eye on him, making his way down to the Lord fight. He'll conceal, conceal play gonna come out. Keyboy's gonna get caught with the Divine Judgment. Can he get away from there? Tyrus Rage comes out. Oh. Keyboy's still gonna be alive. Coral TZ falls into what? the foot. Mystic Field comes out, Donning Light, they get oh. the flicker, but look at Sanford! Under the turret he goes! Still looking for another kill. Monic oh. Esports shutting him down, paying the That's price. Up. But Benny Cutie's still here. Boots in a bad position, but Echo's gonna Whoa. call it off. 
for now. Oh, Keyboy's still alive. My god. Okay, a two for one trade. It works out for Onyx, but I think now is the right time to talk about Battle Spell economy right now because that's the only difference maker for Onyx to be able to get in and out of fights consistently without their Battle Spell. They can't really force out plays. They cannot really get as much value as they want to out of their Wild Charge or even the Tyrant's Rage. Here we go. Another potential fight here, but this Lord is so very important to break even for both sides. Oh, Akko right now maintaining about two to 3,000 gold lead. At 30 minutes into the game, that's almost nothing. You're absolutely right about the battle spells. For Echo, they still maintain a lot of flicker. I see two flicker with Red Tree. Meanwhile, for On and Esports, they, they're down to one, and that's on Boots alone, right? If he's able to find a flank. Oh, here we go. Speaking of oh, flank. Sanford gonna start it up again. Yeah, we gonna go Keyboy. in. He grabs the target. Kyrie still able to get out here. Lord, oh, 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 oh. Keyboy finds Yowie. Coral TZ get the retribution off. And Benny Cooney gonna be able to unleash here. It's a double for now. Echo Philippines still gonna look for another. Oh, Mystic Field comes oh. out. The dawning light, finding to Sanford, pressing the situation. Oh. Kyrie, the outplay comes out. It's Sandy that falls. Oh, that has got to feel so bad for Sanford. He popped the vengeance. He had everything, but the damage was just way too much. Sans, please don't die here. Okay, he's still alive, but it's terrible. Oh, oh. Benny he's Cutie. Okay, <laughs> is he okay? Are we he's good all right. now? He's all right. All right, all right. My blood pressure isn't though. <laughs> Oh my god, what a back and forth game so far. The team fight, just when you think it's gonna lean towards one side, it turns around and lean towards the other side. I mean, at this point, like, I don't even know. Ana can still have a chance because their mechanic is so good. You see the dive just now come from Stanford. I really thought Stanford's gonna get to the back line and kill Sands along with Kari, but that's not what happened. They turned it around. Can I just say, Melissa's having an amazing debut here yep, in yep. M4, and that's what we're seeing. You know, Sands able to get that divine judgment that could be crucial for them. They gotta be careful here how they juggle this Lord around, protecting the top side here. Seal play is committed. Onik Esports still gonna hold on just fine for now. Sanford trying to clear that mid lane. Onik Esports still able to hold the high ground for now. Everybody getting in position here. The first one to pull the trigger, it's Onik Philippines that backs off. All right, if we're looking at the total goal between both of these teams, even though Echo has a 3.1k gold lead, if we're look, talking about power spikes here, Onik, their core members should have the right items. We're looking, yes, Ludox, four items already completed. Yep. We're looking at Granger, expected to have four items, no problem. Same goes for the Valentina, but on the opposite end, we're seeing that even Xavier, he's ready to party now. He's scaled and almost maxed out his items. I do want to point out, Melissa have Athena shield. You know, this is going to be really, really good to not die in one shot, as long as this guy doesn't die in one shot from the Ruby DD combo from CW, yep. he's gonna turn around with Inspire, right? You know how much lifestyle he's gonna get just by activating the auto, auto attack. Well, that's what I mean. They're, Echo Philippines doing such a good job at allowing Benny Cutie not to even be in that position, right? Sanji using the Mystic Field if he has to. A lot of times, even Yaoi, if he's not initiating, he's peeling there for them. And of course, you have that uh, double, pretty much CC coming out from Carl TZ here. So, on Esports, slowly but surely, they can find those weaknesses in Echo Philippines lineup. But I feel like at this point, every time it's gonna come down to those Lord fights. Absolutely, and I think that's why Onik is playing really passively here. They're not trying to make active plays because they know how valuable their battle spells are. And considering their items, they know that they're pretty much even with Echo, and Echo might have a slight advantage in situational items. But as long as Benny QT goes down, they've got a huge advantage. Yeah, I also wanna point out Kyrie's item. This guy built two tank items, right? He has Brute Force Breastplate. He's going for Athena's shield as well. I mean, he doesn't have that much damage. He only has three damage item completely. Now, that means with the BP frontline like Fredrin, like Kaja, it's gonna be kind of hard. We already seen how much Senji is doing with Xavier with the Dawning Light combo. It's absurd at this point. And the Granger is gonna be hard to walk up. A uh, Wizen comes out. It seems like this might be a Lord they want to steal or just give it away to Echo. Oh, here we go. They're gonna come out with the concealed play. Lord gonna be half health here. Oh. Trying to get a position the best they can. Keyboy gonna charge up. Might look for that wide oh. push. Donning Light comes out, chunks a few members down. Here comes the call from Sanford. Gonna push them back here. Lord just gonna go in the hands of Carl TZ. And Onik Esports decides it's better to just defend. I think that was a good idea too. Three of them members, man, Sanji's damage is not to be messed with right now. But I think Onik understand that even if the Lord starts pushing in, it does mean that Echo kind of have to clump up together, which is something that Onik is looking to make a play off of because the Lord side, they only saw two members 
physically visible, but the rest disappearing. So that's not the situation they're looking for. They have to find the right puzzle pieces if they want to make it click. But it seems like this is now Echo's game to lose, right? They up 5,000 gold. The wave is beautifully synced. Now Lore coming in. There are a lot of skills being used mid lane. And here comes a dash. Here comes a dive. Lord gonna go ahead and do work oh. there. Yami gonna flicker in. He's gonna try to get boots down. T-Boy is there to help him out. Able to survive for now. On Keys Boys trying to do their best Damn to hard. hold on here. The best they can. Carl TZ gonna escape the base. They don't want to get pulled either. As you mentioned, Dave. Echo Philippines, they gotta be careful. It is a 5k gold lead, but the wrong move could turn this game around. It could absolutely turn it around, and I think Onik, they understand it. They've got a decent amount of wave clear all across the board, and I think, especially coming back to the item build that Dave was mentioning about Kyrie building a little bit more defensively rather than hyper-aggressive, he understands that his damage overall isn't going to matter physically oh. against these tanks. Wait, the conceal play, this We're might done. be it. Conceal play coming again, T-Boy, does he commit? Not just yet, they get the flicker oh. out from CW, there's the dawning light, oh. Sand Force Immortality's gonna be bopped! Can they grab the kill? Oh. Kyrie able to secure one himself! Carl TZ can't get the Appraiser's Wrath. Yaoi quite low. It's going to be an immortality for an immortality. He's in trouble as Keyboy falls here. Kyrie, though, waiting there. Yaoi's immortality is oh, pumped. Oh, CW able to clean up the kill, but it's a bad news for him as he falls in the bush. It's an even trade. Honestly, even though that CW died there, making it a two for two, isn't so bad when you're the team behind. However, we're kind of maxed out on gold here. It's not a matter of who's got the better economy, it's who can execute a cleaner play. Now, I gotta say, one more time, Kyrie's damage is falling off, right? Yuli Granger has spelled his skill harder and harder in the late game, but just now you saw he did a full skill one damage onto the Fredrin. Yeah. And it, it almost did no damage, right? Tickled him. Yeah, just tickled him a little bit. I mean, at this point, you gotta be worried about who is gonna be the main damage. You even protect Kyrie. Is it even worse to protect Kyrie at this point? I think it's, well, I think Kyrie is a little more self-sufficient, and I yeah. think his ultimate is a really useful tool. Let's think of it as utility rather than hard damage at this point, because now they just need to slow them down enough to chase them so that Boots could look for an engage. Sans might be able to get multiple people, but the most ideal one is the Rue BDD combo coming up from CW. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I love? Uh, honestly, it's too late for this, but if Boots had the weapon mastery on the Gronk, <laughs> uh, you know, because really, I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't been able to true. utilize the high end drive. True. And I feel like, you know, he's picked up those items on that Gronk, but still, you kind of lose out on picking that high end drive instead of having a weapon mastery here, but still, oh. T Boy gonna go find Sanford here. It's another Lord Dance as Carl Teasy gonna go ahead and start it up. Onik Esports getting in position here. Notice the positioning as well for Yawi. Might be looking for a pick. Sans does not have that divine judgment just yet. He's looking for Yawi as well. Carl TZ keeping it in this area for Echo Philippines. There's Yawi. He's going to pull boots. Do they engage on this? Carl TZ gets oh. the knockup. Boots goes into oh. all charge, but Sandy falls. CW grabbed the kill. Pops the winter truncheon, but going to fall from Yawi as well. Keyboy reinitiating, but he has to flick around. Carl Teasy gonna force Kyrie back here. Now it's Keyboy in trouble. He goes low, can't get away as Sanford grabs the kill. I mean, this is a double core we're talking about. A Xavier is a core, yes, he can kill a Xavier, but what about Benny QT? Right, the Melissa, the scariest person in them on the map right now. That person's untouched. This two never overlap the position. That means there's only one person CW can kill, right, at this point. It's so hard, even if he gets on Benny QT, because the Athena shield is making it impossible to kill as well. Yeah. So, I mean, at this point, this is looking real, like increasingly bad for the side of Onyx Esports. For sure, I think Onyx have a really tough road ahead of them. I feel like Echo has some good protocols, and I think you know teams especially need to understand, or maybe even learn from this game from Echo specifically, the positioning that they have around these lords. It feels like you cannot fail. I mean, at this point, we've seen this a couple of times now. Oh, Onyx Esports gonna have to do the defense game for this Lord marching on top, and every time it's gonna get a little bit harder and harder. And really, I mean, if even the previous fight, Sans, again, was not able to have that divine judgment, and that is the key ultimate that he wants to take here, because then at least you can be the one to initiate these fights, especially in the defense of this base. Now Onik Esports, Ooh. once again, it's a dire situation for them here. Echo Philippines gonna work uh. on this mid turret for now. That's the pull. Key Boy's in trouble. Has the immortality for now, gonna be popped. But he's gonna go down here just, just now. While Charge did come out, another falls. Johnny Light's gonna come out. They have to work on the Lord. Echo Philippines 
working on the crystal. Another falls here, Ooh. and that's going to be it as Echo Philippines draws first blood in the series. GG well played. Echo take game number one. And the Filipino fans here at M4 are going wild. But this is only the first of a best of five. Things could easily change. And we have to take a breather for a moment here. Really think about this for a moment. Because this technically was the inevitable outcome if you're stretched out for this long. Oh my god, what a game one. And game it, one. And we're all predicting this might go to full five best out of five games, right? I, I mean, hope it does. I hope it does too, because this is too good of a gameplay. I have never seen team fight like this, right? You know, once just when you think one side is winning, and then all of a sudden, no, you completely prove them wrong. And here we go, the game highlights. I gotta say, man, uh, I hope the rest of the series is like this. It was nail biner between these two teams, and you just saw, like you said, getting at some point, mm. it's it's more so just about the battle spell economy, yep. those micro decisions and those team fights, the skirmishes, especially the Lord fights. And whoever comes out with an advantage there is going to win those fights. And still, I mean, Anik Esports had a great draft. It's just unfortunate that they weren't able to pull off those micro decisions to win those team fights. No, absolutely. I think it's rather crazy that they were able to pull off some of these moves at all. Like, I mean, if the, if it wasn't for tournament rooms, we wouldn't see this level of gameplay. We were playing on regular rank mode. My ping would be too high to catch someone off just like that. But guys, you know what time it is. It's going to be trying to beat the current record of 34 here. Production ready because this one's going to be fast. Let's do this. M4 Battle Night goes live this January 21st, so expect loads of events and rewards up for grabs in the game. First off, complete battles tasks in the game on January 21st to get a skin code of your choice. You can choose the skin you like the most from the chest aside from the battle bonus that awaits you on the same day. Play matches and you'll get Team Star protection for three matches. Double Star Rising points, double protection points, double EXP and double BP for five matches. We are not stopping there. Free access to all heroes and loads of epic skins will also be available that very day. So save the date, log into the game on January 21st, enjoy the match and win tons of Rewards. Let's all celebrate the M4 championship together, including your friends. Did I know? Almost. I knew. I knew that I couldn't make it. I was running out of breath towards the last part. But Proud maybe. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Dad. You're but welcome. maybe I'll break it next time. I gotta wipe my monitor with all that spit. But with that being said, how are we gonna? I don't know how the analysts are gonna break this game. So I'm gonna leave it up to you, boys. Please take it away, the analyst, Dad. Honestly, that was pretty impressive, Gideon. I can almost last that long. And yes, welcome to the Alice stand with me, LaFell, Leo, as well as Trex, where the Arcas open up game one with a victory. Leo, initial thoughts. I think Echo is on something new. They've shown us bits and pieces of the past six months of the metagame, revived them, they debuted the Melissa, and they've shown us a new way to do the Lord's Dance. I mean, I think in the draft, everything that Echo had was just built to punish what Onik brought there, and uh, from there on, they were just able to clean up throughout the game. Actually, let's talk about the draft, because Echo, I kind of like their draft, but the thing is, I kind of feel like you really need specific players to really unleash the full potential of the draft, because Sanford, on that Joy, has to be like an absolute monster, because Joy, coming in, disturbing the backline, giving a lot of space for the Melissa, for for the Xavier, because again, Xavier, as well as Fredrin, a lot of chaos at the front, and then a lot of AoE damage coming in from Melissa as well as Xavier. That's the genius of one half of the San San duo. He built here a hybrid Joy, and this is my favorite kind of Joy personally, is because he's able to just go into the backline, ruin the backline heavy draft that Onik has put onto the board for Echo to deal with, and the rest is left to, again, Yaoi and Carl Kizi to peel for Benny Cutie. Oh, Lord, Benny Cutie, 904, this is the best I've seen him all week so far. Another thing to point out is with Sanji and then Sanford, you have this decent amount of magic damage, right? But then you have Benny Cutie that comes in towards the end and it forces Onik to choose in that early game to mid to late how they want to build. And in the end, Echo was able to take advantage of that. Benny Cutie going 9-0 and 4 that game. I think the Melissa pick was just, it was clutch. It was with extremely that, clutch. Yeah, with that being said, we got to look at the post-game stats, looking at the damage numbers, because again, I, I can't wait to go to the highlights because there's a lot to say in terms of the movements coming in from Echo as well as Onik. But now, looking at the post-game stats, where the rich guy is Benny QD, but the carry is Sanji. And we don't always say this, but Carl Deasy, 
He's neither the rich guy or the carry. He's the forgotten one. Carl Tizia has grown so much from becoming the M2 Grand Finalist MVP to now maining these tank junglers. Again, he's a little bit like Mobazane in that sense. So, again, very impressive. But something to note here. Look at the team fight participation of the members of Echo, right? They're all relatively in the same level. They're employing their own version of the Ube. It's the purple Ube. The Orca Ube. <laughs> the Orca Ube. They're moving as a pod. They're moving as a pod, as a unit, and... Is that the plural of, like, orcas? Yes. Oh, really? A, a pod of orcas, a yes. Pod a pod of orcas. A group of orcas. I'm writing that down. And they're hunting down the porcupines right now. Hedgehogs. 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 I mean, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. You know, I, I'm colorblind. I can't tell hedgehog and, and porcupine. But, okay, we're going to look at the MVP quickly after this, but... After that, I really want to talk about the rotations because Echo, quite cleverly, because they understand how Onyx Esports wants to move all around the map. But now, we got to talk about the MVP for this game, where we got to see among the five Orcas, who's the one Orca that really stands out above the rest, or swims faster. It is Sanford. 4-4-10, four, four, and ten, creating absolute chaos in the back lines. This is the example of a set-up type of MVP. The way that Sanford finds the angle into the back line and just ruins the plans of the, I'd say, range-oriented lineup of Onyx. Again, it's very clear that they want to have a good setup, a good amount of peel. Keyboy and Boots. But the way that Sanford just goes ahead and finds CW, finds Kyrie, it's just impossible. So that's what his joy here bought for Echo. Yeah, and I mean, once once the uh, once the Grok engages, once the Kufra engages, then the back line is left alone and Sanford is able to just give Kyrie and everyone so many problems now. Taking a look at this heat map. Yeah, looking at the heat map, from five minutes all the way to 10 minutes, if my memory serves me correctly, this is a time where Echo, they, they started moving a little bit more aggressive against Ani because in the early stages of the game, we're looking at Echo. They, oh, it's almost like they, they have all the bushes on law because they know exactly where Onik is moving around because the first two to four minutes, honestly, it's, it's on the hunt. Onik is looking for Echo, but no one is to be seen. And that's the genius of the communications of Echo. Folks watching at home and even here in the stadium, I suggest you guys check out their content on social media because they actually release the way that they communicate, the way they talk to each other. And yeah, you won't really see them checking bushes uh, the old-fashioned way. It's because they're helping each other by each taking parts of the map and deducing who's where and doing what. And now taking a look at some of these fights towards the very beginning, there was kind of that clock on the Granger. And this is the point where we start to see Echo take the advantage in these team fights. And no matter how hard Kyrie carries this game, it's just not enough. He gets a couple shots, he gets one, but every time Echo gets a few more. And this is where Yaoi is able to just punish those dives. The go away, punish those dives. And it just was the code to get through Onik here. Yeah, it looks like in this first game in this entire series, Echo has an advantage in terms of having the map completely open to them because based on what you said, based on deductions, if I can't see you here, then option A and B. But when everyone is giving all the options, okay, 